Good morning. Welcome to worship. I invite you to stand as you're able, turn and face the cross. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Thus says our God, The former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Welcome once more to worship on this beautiful day. Thanks for setting aside this time. A couple of announcements. After worship is Sunday school downstairs in Grace Center, and we hope that you will be there. Come on down. 
And then is also the annual meeting that'll be held here in the sanctuary, 1015, also on Zoom, and we hope that you plan to be a part of that. Thank you. Tomorrow is food distribution across from Woodstock High School. If you need food, or you know someone who does, um, or if you'd like to volunteer, tomorrow afternoon. Next Sunday after worship, we're having a meet and greet, time to get to know uh, people newly, a part of our, our faith community, some new members, and so that'll be after worship next Sunday. I hope you've seen, uh, had a chance to look at your grace notes. This Lent, we'll be starting a women's Lent Bible study that'll be meeting on Tuesday evenings. There's a sign-up link in your email. There's also a sign-up sheet on the board. Uh, consider this and be a part of that. We hope that you, that might be a part of your practice for the season of Lent. I invite you to a moment of prayer now. So I can all look and wave, but Jan Burns is preparing for surgery. So uh, she'll be having knee replacement surgery, and we will be holding you in prayer, and we'll start now as you look to that surgery day about a week out. Let us pray. Gracious God, send your peace and your healing. Equip medical team as they prepare for surgery and watch over Jan. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Blessings and we can't wait to see you soon. I know. You got it. You got it. All right. We have an announcement from YSJ, Youth Standing with Jesus. So come on up. Good morning. In 1990, a simple prayer was said, Lord, even as we enjoy the Super Bowl football game, help us be mindful of those who were without a bowl of soup to eat, was delivered during a service at Spring Valley Presbyterian Church in Columbia, South Carolina. This very idea paved the way for young groups across the country to begin collecting dollars in soup pots that would directly go to local charities of their choice. Since that year, Super Bowl of Caring movement has collected over $175 million to put food in, in the hands of those in need. Next week, Sunday, high school, or YSJ will be asking Grace friends and family to reach, help reach out or, and exceed our goal of $300 to donate to ELCA World Hunger. How can you help? Let us show you with this simple demonstration. Next week, church service, locate the, a teenager holding a soup pot. Throw cash, checks, and, and spare change into the pot. And then enjoy the thanking, thanking you for your generosity. If you cannot donate at this time, please pray for those in need or ask us how you can help in other ways. Thank you for helping make a difference. Thank you. We look forward to the joyful noise of the change and the quieter noise of your generosity next Sunday. I invite you to stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do, and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is from Isaiah. Shut out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and do like to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. 
They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is, it, is such the fast that I chose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bounds of, in, bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You'll, you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Word of God, word of life. The psalm will be read responsively. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending, and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The reading from 1 Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words of wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Bruce, Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak of wisdom though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceive what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, 
For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being truly knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are, spirit, are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Let's go. Come on down. <laughs> Teenagers, be ready. You're going to get a shout out today. Be ready. You're still considered a kid. I have, remember at the beginning of the year, I said we're going to learn some big vocabulary words. Yeah, you come on up. Come on up. Come on. Good job. Well, this one is probably one of the trickiest, most challenging, but it fills our, our soul with hope and kindness and joy. This is a tricky vocabulary word. Love. Love. How do we define love? I need some help. What is love? Okay, when you make friends, you love them. Good. What is love? Something you feel. Good. What is love? Country. It's an emotion you express. Can I show love? Can I demonstrate love? Yeah. Teenagers, is love tricky? Love is tricky, right? Especially in high school. 
Like when you're dating somebody for a month, it's like forever, right? Well, it's a good thing we know the big guy upstairs because he gave us a definition, okay? He helped us define what love is. Are you guys ready? Love is patient. What does patience mean? You wait. So we know Miss Nancy over there, okay? What is she known for after service? Snacks. Snacks. And what do you all do? Run. Run. Is that being patient? No. No. If I would put the candy right here in the middle. Oh, oh, oh. Patience. Is that hard? Is being patient sometimes hard? Yeah. All right. I'll take it back because I know it's tempting. Love is kind. What does that mean to be kind? Nora. To be grateful. Be nice to someone. So would it be kind if I only gave this to the boys? No. No, it wouldn't be kind? Okay. It is not envy. Envy means, anybody know what envy means? Jealous. It does not boast. It is not proud. So if somebody should score three baskets in a row, should you yell, I'm on fire? No. no. That's being mean. You should just shoot your basket, go back and play defense, right? Um, it does not dishonor others. Ooh, what's that one? Does, that, does not dishonor. Do you make fun of other people? No. no. Do you tell lies to other people? No. No, that would be dishonor, right? It is not, now this one is hard. It is not self-seeking and it is not easily angered. How many of you guys get angry at your siblings? The key word in there is not easily. All right, so do siblings sometimes annoy you? Yes. Yes, yes, yes they do, but if you love them, you have patience and you're kind and it keeps no record of wrongs. Hmm. What does that mean? Keep no record of wrongs. Do you know some people who make mistakes and they make you sad? Yeah? Well, if you really love them, you understand it's a mistake and you forgive them. So is love, is love tricky? Is that a tricky word? Okay. Well, today, we are going to do our activity today, and we are going to show love to a, group, to a group of people who might need some extra little loving. We're going, to, we're going to make goodie baskets or goodie bags for the residents at Healthstone who might need some extra love around Valentine's Day. What do you think? Sounds good? Are you ready for your candy? Okay. Here you go. You're the first. All right. Let's put our hands in. Come on down. Oh, you got to do it. All right, ready? Jesus on three. One, two, three. Jesus. Here we go. Candy, 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 candy. Patience, patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Patience, patience. Okay. You were patience. Well, a few weeks ago, someone here shared a story with me and then gave permission to share with all of you. So I was told about this time that their family was driving around in town in early January, and they spotted a Christmas decoration of their child's favorite character. It was out on someone's front lawn. How could they get one? It sounds like they talked about maybe checking a couple stores, but, you know, it was well after Christmas, so they might be sold out by now. Someone else said they could take it. Had been left out in that yard for quite a while after Christmas, after all. To which their kid said, no, I am a child of God. 
I am a follower of Jesus, and Jesus says we don't steal. End of story. Love it. I love this incredibly bold, assured declaration. I am a child of God. May we all summon up that courage of a child here in our midst when we are faced with a questionable choice, an unethical decision, an option to serve ourselves at the expense of someone else. May we dare to respond the same way. No way. I am a child of God. I am a follower of Jesus. Who am I? And what am I going to do? Those are a couple of questions that come up throughout our lives that Jesus equips us to be able to answer. Who are you? You are a beloved and a beautiful child of God. And what are you going to do? For one, not steal Christmas decorations. But on the whole, you are going to love one another as Jesus has loved you. You are going to live your life as Jesus has taught you to live. Now, for the first people who would have heard the Gospel of Matthew, they were living in a time of conflict, a little bit of an identity crisis. Jerusalem and the temple had been destroyed. What then was the future of their faith? What did it mean to be faithful? Who are we? What are we going to do? And so in Jesus' teaching, we heard today, it's still a part of this Sermon on the Mount that we heard last week, starting out with the Beatitudes. Jesus responds to these pervasive throughout time questions. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Jesus is clear in saying that the teachings, the law, the scriptures continue and are fulfilled and are, reveal, are revealed in Jesus. And so to those people who are first gathered on that mountainside that he's teaching, later to the early Christians who would first hear the gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells them quite clearly who they are and how they're going to live into a future, a faithful way forward. You are the salt of the earth. Salt gives so much flavor, right? It draws flavor out from other ingredients. If you spend any time cooking or baking, you know the role salt plays. Perhaps you've noticed if it's missing. And salt can also be used as a preservative, too, keeping things intact. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus says. Don't lose that saltiness. You are the light of the world. And what are you going to do with that? Well, first, you don't cover it up with a bushel basket. Put it on a lampstand so that the light is shared throughout the whole house. Let your light shine in the world. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus speaks to his disciples and to that crowd, the people who came to hear him, and he speaks to their identity and calling. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Bring flavor and life and light to the world. We get to look back and imagine how that first group would have heard it. We can understand a bit about what the first Mathean community was struggling with and how Jesus' teaching would have responded to some of their identity and future-oriented questions. And then today we get to wonder, how does Jesus' teaching still resonate with any of the questions we are asking? Do we know anything like the Mathean community living in a time of theological and political and social tension? What's the future of our faith? What does it mean to be Christian? 
What does the future of Christianity look like? What does it look like in the United States where there's this accelerated decline in mainline denominations? There's a co-opting of identity with awful hate and harm done in the name of Christianity. Who are we? What are we going to do? Remember the ways you know who you are. Name that identity. Name it as boldly as a child declared. For you too are a child of God. And that informs what you do. God has done that for you. That hasn't changed. God has created you and named you, claimed you, forgiven you, redeemed you. God is at work. You are a child of God. You are salt of the earth. And what you do with that is just as Jesus taught. Bring some flavor and life to the world. You are the light of the world. And what you do with that is dare to let it shine. You are the light of the world, and the dreary, weary world needs the light of Christ to be revealed. We call upon this particular teaching of Jesus each time we witness a baptism here in our midst. After the newly baptized is prayed for, marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever, then a representative of the congregation walks up to our paschal candle, holds a baptismal candle and takes that light and walks it towards the newly baptized and says these very words. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. That is the part that we carry with us out into the world. That's the what are we going to do part of our faith. Here at Grace, we like to talk about it by saying our mission is to share God's grace. Take this light. You are the light of the world. Let it shine. And then, when other people see it, they'll recognize that it is God at work in you. And they'll share praise and glory and gratitude to God. So on this day, that's the day of our annual meeting, we'll take a look back at the year we've been through and look forward to the year ahead of ministry and life together in Jesus' name. And we keep asking these questions. Who are we? What are we going to do? Who are we? Beloved of God, salt of the earth, light of the world. How are we going to share God's grace with others, bring bold life into our relationships, and let our lights shine in the world? There's a pretty boundless, far-reaching nature to letting your light shine. And so as we consider who we are and what we're going to do, I invite you to hear alongside that these words I came across from a leader in the Church of England. Archbishop William Temple is quoted as saying this, The church is the only organization on earth that exists for those who are not its members. I don't know if you think that's still true to this day, but there's something to it about our purpose. Dietrich Bonhoeffer would later write from prison, The church is the church only when it exists for others, not dominating, but helping and serving. It must tell people of every calling what it means to live for Christ, to exist for others. May we keep sight of who we are, what we're called to do, because Jesus has good news. God is at work through you for the sake of the earth, of the world, the neighbor, and the stranger. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Call together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Merciful God, inspire our wonder at creation, from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industries that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations that to practice righteousness. Merciful God, loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst, grant peace to endless quarrels, put an end to hunger, and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, Jesus. shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, the cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for the all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God. Trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace.
Thank you for shining your light into the world, for your generous participation in this community, and your generosity in giving. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy. That we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. All is ready and all are welcome.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray for our home communion ministry. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One moment before we continue. I think the last song, we need to move around a little bit. So if anyone needs to stretch before the annual meeting, come on up here. Kids who would like to move around, come on up. All right. Part of our worship is we follow the cross in. So you'll see how we follow the cross in. And then we follow the cross back out. So today we're going to follow the cross. We're going to march. We're going to dance. We're going to pray. And we're going to sing. And you can fall in line if you feel so moved by the Spirit. Um, and then the second announcement is Nancy and Bill Kresner are graciously continuing to host coffee hour. And Lauren brought treats because today is Kevin's birthday. What a way to celebrate your birthday by being the council treasurer presenting a budget at the annual meeting. <laughs> Grab a treat, say happy birthday, come on back for the annual meeting at 1015. So we'll continue with the blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. <laughs> 